judges have been front and center in the presidential campaign. You're a former uh, federal judge in addition to a former uh, uh, attorney general. You wrote a, recently wrote a Wall Street Journal column about Donald Trump's uh, calling into question whether a federal judge that was born, who was born in Indiana uh, but had Mexican parents could objectively uh, sit on a, on the case regarding Trump University. And you mentioned in that that you had had your objectivity challenged by by a, uh, a criminal uh, defendant at one point. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that happened. Um, well, that happened during um, the trial of in a case called United States versus Abdul Rahman. He was known as uh, among other, as the blind sheikh. And um, the lawyers who were representing at that point a couple of the defendants um, who ultimately were edged out of the case. Um, the first day uh, said that I should um, not be on this case because I was the wrong religion and so on and so forth and, and my wife uh, was the principal of a Jewish school and so on and I said, well, you know, you want to make a recusal motion, make it. And it wasn't for several months that they did and eventually they did make a recusal motion and urged and asked me uh, as part of that motion uh, to answer a whole list of questions about um, my religion and my wife's school and, and my ties to the state of Israel and people in the state of Israel to the third degree of consanguinity, as I recall it, the question went, and um, just a whole lot of other stuff. They, they, the, the premise for their um, motion was that Israel was a victim or an intended victim of the 93 Trade Center bombing, and therefore um, I would have a relationship with a victim. So, the, but, so is there a big difference between what Trump said about this judge and what, what the terrorists said about you? In the sense that they're basically saying, he's basically saying that someone with Mexican-American parents uh, couldn't objectively rule on any case relating to him because he wants to build a wall. These guys were saying, because you're a Jew, uh, you can't rule on terrorism cases. Right. You know, people have tried this a lot. Um, they've tried it with African-American judges. And um, there are decisions, and they've tried it with, with female judges in, in, in sex discrimination cases. Um, I guess by, by that standard, the only, way, the only person who could sit on a sex discrimination case is a hermaphrodite. Um, I mean, you know, you, you're either a man or a woman, usually. Um, usually. Usually. <laughs> uh, so, and, and the, look, the fact is that uh, that provides no basis uh, for recusal. And uh, there's no rational reason for arguing that somebody, uh, that an African-American judge who had a long history of, of uh, civil rights involvement before he went on the bench can't sit on a civil rights case. And if the judge feels that he can't, then, or she can't, then they recuse themselves. And there's a recusal motion, as you pointed out, that they can, someone can make. If they, somebody if they, can make uh, a motion. So, and a so. judge is, I mean, if a, if a judge knows of reasons why the judge can't be objective, uh, or why somebody could reasonably question their objectivity, reasonably is the key word, then they're obligated to recuse themselves regardless of whether there's a motion. Sure. Now, it's interesting because, of course, uh, what, what Trump said was troubling to a lot of people, but isn't the left a little bit culpable in all this in the sense that you, you pointed out in your piece that uh, J Justice Sonia Sotomayor said that, uh, famously said that her background as a wise Latina with the richness of her experience would more often than not reach better conclusions than a white male who hasn't lived that life. Um, so aren't Trump's critics sort of have, trying to have it both ways? They, they have, embrace identity politics when it comes to judges, when it's favorable to them, but they, they're offended when someone brings it up in the other direction. Sure. Um, I mean, I attended um, the confirmation hearing for a highly qualified young woman um, and heard lots of references to um, somebody being the first Asian or the first woman or whatever. And uh, I can understand that a little bit, but when you start picking judges that way and expecting them to rule consistently with what you believe they should rule as women or as African Americans or as Jews or as Hispanics or whatever, um, then you've stopped having a justice system. Um, I pointed out in the piece, judges wear black robes in part as a, a, to symbolize the idea that they're supposed to be all the same. It shouldn't matter whose head is popping out from under the black robe. Um, it may very well matter. Some judges are better than others. Some judges have points of view that are different from others. But it's supposed to matter as little as possible. It's aspirational. And when you stop having that aspiration, then you're going to lose a lot of what you should have. And we've, to a large measure, stopped having that aspiration in the United States.